For those who saw our first video on the 68,000 entry level computer, as we called it, um, this is the finished item on the board which we showed you in that first video. Um, it's quite basic as you can see, there's very little on it. There are in fact two more ICs and a crystal on the back, we'll show you those in a second. Um, there are various bits missing, like the two, uh, the two RAMs are missing, displays missing and the I.O. decoder is missing as well. Um, that leaves us with just the reset button, the CPU itself, there's a 7474 uh, there, there's a 138 which is the memory decoder, an 08 and an 04 and obviously you have the high and the low program memories. On the back here we have the two ICs and the crystal. As I explained in the first video, the reason for doing this is because there was a bit of spare room on the back behind the IC, the big 64 pin thing, and I didn't think there'd be necessarily enough room on the front. I think you might have just been able to squeeze it in looking at the amount of spare room at the very bottom. But uh, all we have here is a 7474 and an LS14. Uh, this is to do with the um, halt and reset uh, circuitry. And this one is the uh, oscillator and the debounce switch for the uh, reset button on the side. Um, one thing I did notice was you do need to uh, uh, swat up on your miniature compo component placement because it's a bit of a squash up the top by the 14. So we managed to have to put some of these tiny little resistors in. There's a little ceramic capacitor in there and there's obviously these resistors as well uh, up this end. So it's a bit of a squeeze crystals here. It's a 4 megahertz crystal we're using for this. Let's have a quick look at the uh, simple program we'll be using. I call this a program loop because all it does is literally runs round and loops round in a circle. So we can check easily with a scope or a logic probe whether or not the circuit is actually working or not. Um, it consists of some very simple things. These or low order addresses here are part of the exception vector table and they are necessary to put a couple in just to make the system actually go to the right place when you start running the program. Unlike something, I mean, there, each process seems to be different. Z80 starts at 0000, zero, zero, zero and everything starts in the bottom up. Whereas others, uh, you have to go to a high order and then it drops down to where you want. Well, this is one of the ones which starts at the zeros. Um, but the first thing here actually which I put in is the supervisor stack location, which isn't necessary for this because there's no uh, RAM and we're not using the stack at all. So just to, it's almost like a case of ignore that one because I'm going to use that later on uh, in the next program. But this is the important one. At this location here, you have this 0400. And what this is, is this is the program start location, the program counter in other words. And what that's telling us is at this location, when the uh, system has done its business sorting out what it needs at this end, it's going to jump to that location and that's where our program starts. So you notice this is 0400 is here, um, which of course in EEPROM terms is 0200. This is where the confusion comes in. Um, we have 4EF8. Now a 4EF8 is actually a 16-bit jump. So you can see that once it actually starts its program, the first thing it meets up with is a 16-bit jump and it says, Where's, where am I going to? And it says 0400. So what it's doing is it's jumping from there, it's going to here and going back to itself. So in other words, this will be a loop that goes on forever. Quite simple, really. Just to clarify us a little bit, this is the exception vector table from the 68000 manual. And you notice these are uh, the first, the top half of the uh, exceptions and where the addresses are supposed to be. And you'll notice that this one right at the top is initial stack pointer and at decimal 4 which is hex 004 is reset initial program counter and that is why we put the 0400 in. Okay let's apply some power we've connected up a power supply if we turn the power on so it's come up and note the lead has come on showing there's power so what we'll do first of all is we'll use a logic probe which we have here to show what is actually going on, assuming anything's going on at all and it's working. Anybody familiar, unfamiliar with this type of logic probe, the uh, 
light is on means it's a well you can see it better if I put my hand behind it. This is a in-between le level, a bad level. When the light glows bright, it means that it's a high, and when it goes out altogether, it's a low. Or if it flashes on and off at it's just a predetermined rate, it's showing that there's a toggling or a clock frequency going on there. So first and foremost we have the diagram here. If we look at the address lines which is 32, 31, 30 and 29 they are in this corner. If we look at the N1 note the probe has gone out if you can see it. What I'll do is I'll go in a little bit closer so you can see it. Now we can see that a bit clearer hopefully. This is pin 32. We have a low on 32. That's A4, A3, A2. Ah, we have a clock on A1. So for the other three, there's nothing. So there's logic lows on all three of those. And it's only on A1, which is pin 29, where we actually have a clock signal. That suggests that uh, the processor is probably running around a very short loop, as we should know from our program. If we pop over to the other pins, we start here with this is A5. We have a low, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10. Oh, A10's a high, A11's a low. Right, so A10's a high, which confirms the fact that the program is actually running a very short loop. There's our clocking signal. Um, and that's just what we expected to do. Now there's three useful little pins here, which are right next to the bottom end of the address lines. Uh, pins 28, 27 and 26. And they will show the fun they're called function codes, and they will show whether there's an interrupt acknowledged, other bits and pieces, plus whether it's running in the supervisor mode or whether it's running in the user mode. At the moment, this should be running in the supervisor mode because all we've done is literally gone through the program and gone back on itself. So at no point have we turned and we moved the program back to the user mode. So if we have a look, let's have a look. We have one, two, three, four address lines which that's the one that's ackling, that is function naught. So we have a low on function naught, and we have a high on function 1, and a high on function 2. So once again, that's a naught is low, 1 is high, and 2 is high. Here we have the function code outputs in the manual, and we had a low and a high and a high, remember, from function code 0, 1, 2, they are 0, 1, 2, two types of cycles. If we look, so we're looking for a, a low, a low and a high. Nope, none of those. Low on F0 here, high and high. There we go. So that's what it's telling us. And if we look at this, this is a supervisor program. This is now, we're just simply going to do exactly the same as we did before. We have the, the four address lines. This one, as you can see, is low, low, low. And that's A1. So A1 is actually toggling quite happily there. So, But A2, A3 and A4 are all low. Likewise, if we run along the back, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10. And A10, A10 is high. So there we go. Let's make that a bit more obvious. Check the function codes. Remember the function codes are... it's. One, two, three, four. That's the first function code, which is low. And then we have a high, and we have a high. So function code 0, 1, 2. And that's showing that it's running a supervisor program at the moment. As you can see, we substituted the uh, earlier prompts here, to which I did earlier, as they say. Um, let's do two RAMs now in the position. The IO decoder the 138 there and there's a DL1414 display so all that remains now is to turn it on and see what happens good heavens it actually works not so easy to see with the light on it so I put my hand there yeah 68k and a full stop if we take a quick look at the function codes just to see how things have changed um, the first four are the address lines, and on 28 we have, ah, we have a clocking frequency, it's an oscillator, or an oscillation going on, on 28, oops, 27, 
but 26 is low. Just about to see, it's not easy to see in this light, is it? That's low. I won't dwell on this too much, but this is the actual program which is running in the two EEPROMs to make the display work. Please bear in mind that some of this is, has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's simply I want to use this as the beginning of the program. I'm going to be building um, shortly for myself. So I thought I may as well put the stuff in um, when I start. So if we go right back to the beginning. Remember, this is the same as we saw before. We have the supervisor stack being set to 2780. The program counter then moves off to 0400. There's some auto vectors for the interrupts which have been put in here. There's more information here. This is where the... Uh, we jumped to at that point. We've jumped the exception tables. We're now running the program from 0400, um, but it's still in the supervisor mode. You have two modes: you have supervisor and user. And this is we're loading simply values into registers and putting them in certain uh, memory locations. This is all to do with the interrupts and returns and stuff. Um, so if we go down, the most important thing here, <coughs> once we've done the well, no, the user stack here is um, the value there. And what we have here is in yellow, that's why we yellowed it out, is 46FC and the four zeros means this is moving an immediate value into the actual status register on the CPU. You can only do this from the supervisor mode and in the process of doing it, one of the bits set inside here actually changes it into the user mode. The reason why I find it useful using the user mode for this sort of thing is because if the processor throws a wobbly uh, and it doesn't like something you've done, it'll jump back into the supervisor mode. So you can check with those function codes. Remember we did the three function codes. You can check whether it's in the user mode or the supervisor mode. So if it goes back into the supervisor mode or goes on strike or something, as it sometimes does, all the all the lines go tri-state, you know you've made a mistake. So that's, what, that's what's so important about this. So from now on, we're now in the user program. And what we're doing is we're loading um, a quick load, a quick load of useful um, uh, op codes, we say, 72e what that does is it loads an absolute 8-bit value straight into the d0 register uh, and in this case it's a 2e and then we put that out to a particular location 31 co we're going to put it out to 8000 the display then we do precise precisely the same thing three more times quick load with 4b which is a k 38 which is an 8 and the 36 is 336 is is a, a six uh, and that we put in there then that's the address for that I made a mistake there and that's it now we have simply a jump back which is the same thing 40 f8 remember we use that when we're doing the loop program to 0426 and 0426 takes us right back to the beginning here which is where we start loading with a full stop again